start. And here in an hour or two, they're going to open one of the big airports. Well, because it's be, been closed the whole time. Yeah, that'll be a nice surprise. And there we are in that building right there. Right, and it's really warmed up. I think it's nine. It's a, such a beautiful oh. shot. I walked in this morning. I tweeted about it. I said, I still pinch myself. It's Friday. I love my job. Love you guys. Thank you so much for waking up with us. It's going to be a great weekend. It is. Right. Yesterday, the, the snow was poor. You know, if you looked out the window here in New York, you saw so much snow. And that's true of most places along the East Coast. And then you walked outside, and we were all, no one <laughs> Wanted to, nope. but when when I walked out, it was so peaceful. There weren't a lot of cars on the road. You could only hear the chattering of everybody's teeth. Right, absolutely. <laughs> it was cold. It and was all the cold. squirrels were in the trees. I think most people can handle the cold. It's the wind. Right. Do you no, agree with that? I don't. I, I cannot handle the cold. I I quit. Uh, well, well, two minutes now. After see, it is spring. Right. Hey, let's <laughs> talk about uh, a series of things that we have to get through that all are extremely important. I could, uh, arguably the most important. Uh, a final exa finally, there's going to be a, a legal examination to the Clinton Foundation. And was there indeed a play for pay operation during the years in which she was Secretary of State and he was a former president raking in big dollars? So what they're apparently looking at, and apparently uh, the Wall Street Journal and other news outlets have discovered that apparently there have been FBI uh, in, uh, investigations in Little Rock, Arkansas, which of course is the home of the presidential uh, library and foundation of Bill Clinton. And Brian, you're absolutely right. They're, what they apparently are looking into is when she was Secretary of State, did the Clintons promise something to get something in return? And also, did the Clintons comply with tax laws? In other words, uh, were things supposedly tax exempt but used for personal purposes. Well that this morning when I was hearing this I thought okay well every doesn't anyone who donates to a campaign they're doing it because they want something in return for the most part. Foreign governments do that, individuals do that, but what they're also investigating here is the Clinton Foundation which obviously is a nonprofit organization. It's like a church. They don't have to pay taxes. So if you gave millions of dollars to this organization, to this foundation, were they using that for political gain, promising individuals, promising foreign governments? will do this for you while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State under the Obama administration. So Sarah Carter uh, is doing this investigation, knew about it ahead of time, and now it's been formalized. Here she is. Not only with regard to the Uranium One scandal, but all we have to do is look at what happened with the Clinton Foundation. We know that that actual investigation was never thoroughly shut down. It never officially closed. So this is very important. And there are a lot of senior FBI agents, a lot of people, not just in Little Rock, but in New York and in Florida and in other places where they have been investigating the Clinton Foundation who are breathing a breath of fresh air right now and are really taking heart to what's going on in Little Rock. And I'm sure there's Going to be a lot more information coming out in the couple in the next few months. Well, here's the thing: they better hurry because the statute of limitations, when it comes to most federal felonies, is five years. Hillary Clinton left federal office uh, five years ago. Uh, let's see, uh, 2013. We're now at 2018, so it's got to be done this year if they're going to do it at all. All right. Also, the DOJ Department of Justice—they're they're really busy. They're working on that investigation. Also, they have agreed to hand over all of the documents that were associated with the dossier. House Intelligence Committee, who is chaired by Devin Nunes, has been requesting this for months. Stonewalled. Before. That's right. Now he ha the deadline was Wednesday, and and DOJ has said, okay, we'll release all the documents now, and we're going to release all the interviews views that we had with people that were affiliated with us. Right. So this is pretty amazing because uh, for the most part, we're going to get a look at the upper echelon of the FBI and how they do their operations, including Peter Strzok, uh, uh, Miss Page, mm -hmm. as well as uh, as well as possibly the the Orr couple uh, that that uh, Bruce Orr, uh, Bruce, I can't Orr. say Bobby Orr, the hockey player, but he is mm -hmm. not. That's because there's so much ice. Right. And, and these and both these people had all their teeth, unlike Bobby Orr. <laughs> they miss a couple. <laughs> there uh, are eight people at the FBI that they're they're going to release. They interviewed them. So so now they're going to release that information. It's just going to be it's going to be fascinating to see how this whole uh, how this whole thing went down. They're also going to release all those text messages between between Lisa Page right. and uh, Strzok. What's and, his first and, name? Peter Strzok. And of all the people they're going to be talking to, the FBI people and, and the unredacted uh, witness testimony as well is they're looking at all these people regarding the dossier because it looks like they're at the FBI and yet they have a political bias, which you cannot have that. So, you know, the FBI is not used to this kind of scrutiny uh, of the people who work up on the seventh floor, but you know, now Devin Nunes, uh, as of next week, is going to have all the stuff he's needed to look to see whether or not there was political bias going on in the decision whether or not 
to essentially for this government to spy on the Trumps. Keep your eye on this. A federal judge has said Fusion GPS has to expose the financials mm -hmm. to find out who is paying whom. Now, Fusion GPS, who wants transparency but cut a deal to go behind closed doors, right. now wants those transcripts out, so Senator Grassley thinks that's relatively laughable. Now Fusion GPS is suing uh, to get, uh, excuse me, to appealing stop. Mm -hmm. to stop the release of that financials to find out if this Christopher Steele was getting paid by the Russians yeah. and getting paid by Fusion GPS. This judge has said no. We're, so they're being subpoenaed, Fusion GPS, to release all their financial documents. They were, uh, they're appealing it because the judge said no, you have to release all this. Meanwhile, uh, President Trump was tweeting last night and he was slamming Michael Wolff's new book and uh, giving Steve Bannon a new nickname. Indeed. Here's the tweet if you missed it. This is from the president he tweeted I authorized zero access to White House actually turned him down many times mr. wolf for author of phony book I never spoke to him for book full of lies misrepresentations and sources that don't exist look at this guy's past and watch what happens to him and sloppy Steve of course sloppy Steve is not he's, you <laughs> no he's referring to Steve Bannon and I was watching on Twitter this morning uh, people think of his nicknames that he has dubbed on people that is a very effective one it, within that minutes, will stick it, within minutes it went to the top trending list right but you, he, as you know the problem is uh, he's been on the inside for the longest time so if anyone wants to marginalize and say well there's another Trump hater writing a book and what do you want they're just so they're surprised because Steve Bannon publicly prior to this book being released which he fully cooperated with it seems uh, has been in Trump's corner and said as late as yesterday that he's still gonna fight for the Trump agenda and mm -hmm. thinks Donald Trump is a great man yeah. but the problem is he gave uh, hours of interviews many of which is taped right so a lot of people come out and say they're misquoted uh, they have to know too that if they did walk across the street to the Hay Adams and talk to Michael Wolf that he taped those uh, stories a absolutely those interviews uh, ultimately though the president of the United States probably sold a lot of books for Michael Wolf because Tons. his lawyer came out yesterday and said you know uh, cease and desist you got to stop that we're thinking about suing that guy right there and now Michael Wolf's publisher said as of yesterday you know what we're gonna put it on sale as of midnight last night so you can go out and buy it today and you probably didn't know this I didn't know this until I got into the book business all books drop on Tuesdays that's right. why this book was gonna drop next For Tuesday a Friday Crazy. they have now pushed it earlier they're gonna drop it today because they're planning on it being such right. a success the ink will still be wet so watch your fingers Rush Limbaugh on the leaks on Bannon and the damage to Trump Listen, you know what? I'm just I'll tell you what I'm going to I'm going to tell you everything that I heard all about Bannon's time in the White House. I'm just going to I'm just going to it's it it's some of it's real. Some of it you might call gossip. The thing that I think everybody believes and that everybody knows is that most of the leaking that was coming out of the Trump White House was Steve Bannon. Over half of it. And that's what Don Jr. and Jared, well, Don Jr.'s comments primarily, that's what they're referring to. And I have that on almost unassailable authority. And then he went to a commercial. I, I recognize that music. I think what the, uh, the president has learned with this book coming out is uh, in Washington, D.C., you, you hire some of the professional people who've been in Washington for years. There is absolutely zero loyalty. Somebody who is loyal, though, to this president is Sarah Huckabee Sanders. She's the press secretary. She will be with us at 7.30. Speaking of numbers, did you miss this? Yesterday, the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed above <laughs> 25,000 for the first time ever. Unbelievable. Right. They've also added a ton more jobs, about uh, 55,000 more jobs than they thought. Unemployment claims are down as low as they've been, I think, since uh, 1990. Uh, all indications are uh, that this economy is going to continue to grow like this and even the Washington Post today uh, writes about all the cataclysmic uh, predictions that for the Trump uh, for the Trump four years in office because of his uh, because of some of the policies and how he was viewed yet the world has responded the international markets are doing are doing great and our economy is roaring so yeah. all those all those doom and gloomers so far are 100 percent wrong well in this book everywhere I went yesterday people were saying that's a distraction distraction to right. to take away from what's really happening if you're retiring anytime soon your 401k looks really really good you know right. the 401k is now like a 601k uh, right? they, they say the next stop 
will be 30,000. Mm -hmm. Nothing's stopping Well, now. so don't retire yet. Wait right. until it hits 30,000. I watched Fox and Friends first this morning. Are you retiring, Jillian? Or do you, have you made so much I've money? I've been considering it. Right. You know, I, retiring just a little early. Just a little early? Okay. <laughs> Good Friday morning, guys, to you. To you at home as well. Let's get straight to this extreme weather. The East Coast bracing for round two. Brutal face stinging cold air is moving in and fast. We're talking as low as 40 degrees below zero. The below freezing temperatures coming just hours after the powerful system unleashed havoc leaving major cities paralyzed. The violent storm blamed for at least four deaths and left Boston drowning in historic 15 feet icy floodwaters. Intense winds and whiteout conditions forcing the world's largest passenger debt jet to land at one of New York's tiniest airports. The Airbus A380 was on its way from Germany to JFK Airport when it was diverted to Stewart Airport because the runways at JFK had been shut down. Just crazy. All right, now to a Fox News alert. For the first time in more than two years, North and South Korea will sit down for formal talks on Tuesday. The rogue regime accepting the South's offer after reopening the border hotline. The rivals will discuss the Winter Olympics and how to improve their strained relationship. This comes as the U.S. announced it will delay annual military exercises with South Korea until after the Olympics next month. The popular game show Jeopardy! now on hold as its popular and longtime host Alex Trebek recovers from brain surgery. I had a slight medical problem, uh, subdural hematoma, blood clots on the brain caused by a fall I endured about two months ago. Uh, surgery was performed, the prognosis is excellent, and I expect to be back in the studio taping more Jeopardy! programs very, very soon. Trebek thanking his fans for support. The show's production company, Sony, says there are plenty of finished episodes prepared to air and the schedule won't be affected much, but we certainly wish him well. Indeed. Wow. Yeah. He's a legend. Yes. Yeah. Right. God Thanks, bless him. Jillian. Thank you. Yep. All right, thanks, Jillian. 13 minutes after the hour, straight ahead. President Trump just took a huge step towards delivering on his promise of energy dominance. The former president and CEO of Gulf Oil explains and will go over some of the blowback to his declaration. Plus, as tensions are rising with North Korea, the CDC wants to make sure you are prepared for nuclear war. Yes, we are. This executive order starts the process of opening offshore areas to job creating energy exploration. That was in April of last year. President Trump signed an executive order encouraging more drilling rights in federal waters to help the U.S. achieve energy dominance. Well, now the administration's announcing its five year drilling plan that will allow oil and gas drilling in nearly all U.S. coastal waters. So, what would that mean for our economy and what about the environment? Join us right now is former president and CEO of Gulf Oil, Joe Petrowski. He joins us from Naples down in Florida. Joe, good morning to you. Good morning. You've been waiting for a president to say this, haven't you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you just have to look at history of the importance of energy, not only to our economic well-being, but to our national security. I mean, mo most great wars have been started over the fight for energy, whether it was Japan bombing us shortly after we embargoed oil in 1941 mm -hmm. or, the, or the Germans moving into the Polish and Romanian energy fields in World War II. Okay. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, it's great for our national security and great for our economy. Okay, so it's good, Joe, for our national security. It's good for our economy. What about our environment? Because there are a number of even Republicans, for instance, Rick Scott from the state you're sitting in right now down in Florida, he opposes the plan. He said this, I have already asked to immediately speak to Secretary Zinke, Interior Secretary, to discuss the concerns I have with this plan and the crucial need to remove Florida from consideration. My top priority is to ensure that Florida's natural resources are protected. He doesn't want an oil spill. You know, everybody thinks about the Deepwater Horizon or back in the 70s with the spill out in California. They don't want that to happen in their state. Oh, listen, I, I fully agree with that as a resident of Naples, Florida, but uh, our current resident of Naples, Florida. But the fact of the matter is, I'll point out two things. Most oil spills occur transporting the oil, not drilling for it. I That's mean, right. obviously, Deepwater Horizon was a terrific and tragic um, exception to that. Right. But the fact of the matter is, 
we're going to have drilling in off sea or offshore um, places. I know both China and Saudi Arabia have approached the U.S. about drilling in our right. waters. And I would much rather have a U.S. company sure. um, drill because they're subject to U.S. tort. And right. as long as we have tort lawyers in this country, I think that's better than any regulation. And the fact that, that BP cost them almost $100 billion, yeah. both in market value, penalties. Great point. Um, uh, Everybody would be no. very safe if they did wind up with one of the leases. Joe, you would know you used to run a big oil company. We thank you very much for joining us from uh, down in Naples, where it's 42 degrees right now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Have a good day and a good weekend. Meanwhile, think every vote doesn't count. Think again. This bowl was just used to pick Virginia's new estate representative. Who won, the Democrat or the Republican? Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Joe. We have some quick headlines. Republicans still control the Virginia State House thanks to the luck of the draw, literally. The names of the two candidates who landed in a tie, dumped into a ceramic bowl, swirled around, and then the name was drawn. Republican David Yancey's name was pulled out, meaning he gets to keep the seat. Virginia state law calls for tied elections to be decided by a drawing, but it hasn't been used since 1971. The Democratic candidate, Shelley Simons, has not yet conceded. And this politician also winning in a strong of luck. Tom Nelson sworn in as the mayor of Laurel, Montana, after the mayor elect didn't show up to the ceremony. Dave Wagner won November's election against Nelson, but never quit his other job to take the office. The city council then forced to appoint Nelson. Brian? All right, uh, Ainsley, on Wednesday, the Missouri State Legislature kicked off the 2018 session, like many. But not without controversy, during the Pledge of Allegiance, this Democrat, Bruce Franks Jr., chose to raise his fist in an act of protest, claiming to reporters he prefers to pledge allegiance to the people. And don't, uh, and, don't, uh, and don't acts of defiance like this actually hurt and divide the community, some would say. Uh, or do they bring it together? Is that why he was elected? With us right now to weigh in, Fox News contributor Kevin Jackson. Kevin, uh, he says that he was making a statement uh, because there's a lot of things that happened to his people uh, that he wanted <laughs> to speak out about. Yeah, a lot of things happening to his people, Brian, are things that he's allowing to happen. I was looking at the statistics, and if you were to look at St. Louis in comparison to Chicago in terms of size and population, St. Louis would have had about 1,700 murders this year had it been Chicago. They, they topped over 200 murders in that city. It's been a city that's been economically depressed for decades now. They've gone from 25 Fortune, one, uh, Fortune 500 companies in the state of Missouri down to 12. And it, the, the city's in triage. It's, it's gone from a population of over 800,000 in the mid-1950s to 318,000 today. And this guy wants to raise his fist in solidarity of what? In solidarity of Democrat rule over a city that is, has absolutely created problems beyond belief. Well, he also had, uh, has a bit of a past. It shouldn't really be a surprise. We know that he uh, was protest. Uh, we know that he was protesting on Black Friday. Uh, right, he was arrested the there. Mall. He also is uh, a rapper. He talked about <laughs> shooting snitches and dismembering murder victims. Uh, so this is all you have to do is Google him. Yeah, his, his rap name is Oops, and I think that, that they could say that that's the, the uh, pro proper name for him is in terms of how he got elected. Look, these guys that are living on this circa 2016 muscle memory of Barack Obama's presidency and thinking that this Kaepernick type uh, thing of holding up the fist is, is going to mean something, they need to look forward, and they need to look at the policies that are going to move black folks forward in all these cities, and they can start by stop focusing on these racial things that are dividing right. the country and start looking at you know the policies quite frankly of what donald trump's doing st louis is poised to do some very very good things if they get rid of these these uh clowns like right. this guy that that seems to want to continue this uh you know pretend that the economic problems that are plaguing black folks are are have to do with you know solidarity right. I, I would have to say after year one i'm disappointed the president has not put forward anything publicly any type of urban revitalment he said what the heck do you have to lose i'd like to know what his plan is to help people in all different situations going forward what ben carson is doing you know what they might be working on in the inner city i'm a little surprised we haven't heard much from uh, on the president from the president on that are you 
Well, no, I'm not, Brian. Well, look, we've got uh, jobs that are uh, finally becoming available in the inner cities because of the low level, the, the unemployment level. We've got, you know, and I don't like focusing on the stock market, but look at what's going on with this, uh, the economic boom that's occurring under President Trump, the fact that all these different corporations are coming back. Barack Obama said manufacturing wouldn't come back to America. He lost 17,000 manufacturing jobs in the last year of his uh, presidency, and yep. President Trump has gained 171,000. So the jobs are coming back, and you've got black to raise the Black ocean. unemployment is going down. I'm just saying the president could be more forward uh, on that, and he could maybe push, he his, he could push Ben Carson to do something. Uh, yeah, I think uh, he or will. Or publicly. All right. Uh, uh, well, uh, yeah. yeah, I think he will eventually. He'll get there. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin Jackson, All thanks right. so much. All right, Brian. More trouble for Hillary Clinton. A brand-new FBI investigation coming her direction. Congressman Ron DeSantis knows the details. He'll unveil it next. Plus, how does this happen? A teen dangling from a ski lift. How this one ended. Next. That is a great song for our next guest, especially. Let's bring in the Republican Congressman Ron DeSantis from the great state of Florida. He's a member of House Judiciary Committee and House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Good morning to you, Congressman. Good morning. You want to give the folks down in Florida something to talk about. Tell us your big announcement. Well, as you remember, a few weeks ago, the president tweeted support for me as a candidate for governor of Florida. So today we're going to uh, be filing the paperwork uh, to begin that uh, effort. And as somebody who's a military officer, Iraq veteran, a proven conservative, and then with the support of the president, you know, I'm in a position to exercise the leadership that can build on the great work that Governor Rick Scott has done to advance economic opportunity, reform education, and drain the swamp in Tallahassee, which needs to be drained just like Washington. And people can go to my website at rondesantis.com if they want to take a look. Well, I, I did read uh, down in the Florida Press uh Mr. DeSantis, that apparently you've got your own leadership team, some uh, prominent Americans who have signed up to help you. They include a couple of billionaires. Uh, Sheldon Adelson is on your team. Rebecca Mercer is on your team. Foster Freeze is on your team. Why are they on your team? Well, I think a lot of it is because I've been uh, somebody who has a proven track record uh, of leading in the Congress. Uh, you had mentioned some of the investigations uh, into the foundation, right. into Uranium One, what we're doing to hold uh, people like Peter Strzok and the FBI accountable, and then some of the legislative initiatives from helping with the tax bill uh, to doing things uh, to hold Iran accountable. So I think it's if you if you work hard and you do good things, I think people tend to notice that. Right, and you know, and you're willing to take action. Uh, and, and go front and center and talk about it. Meanwhile, uh, the FBI has done something you've been calling for for a while. They're finally looking into the Clinton Foundation. They're doing an investigation to find out if essentially that nonprofit, that char charitable organization, was actually a pay for play, a wink and a nod for the Clintons uh, to get the president possibly huge speaking fees for influence for the Secretary of State and the supposed heir apparent for the nomination for President of the United States in Hillary Clinton. What do you think they'll find? Well, this has been an issue that's really lingered for years, Brian. Finally, uh, last year, uh, I and a couple others in the Congress with the uh, revelation that there was a confidential informant who was involved in the Russian racketeering underlying the Uranium One deal that he wanted to come forward. Uh, we brought him forward. We started an investigation. Uh, but if you look at what happened around that time, the chairman of Uranium One gave $2.3 million to the Clinton Foundation in 2009, 2010, while this deal was pending. And yes, there are other people on the CFIUS board, but clearly if the Secretary of State objected to that deal, that would probably be fatal. Um, and that was never really vetted and investigated. And so I think the efforts we started in the Congress, and we're going to continue, I think the FBI had to take a look at it. And I do think that they are talking to this informant and are going to get uh, all the facts along with the Congress. Good. Uh, also, there's a report out uh, with the Daily Beast. They're suggesting that the Department of Justice is looking into reopening Hillary Clinton's email server case as well. Because, and, and this goes to the larger issue about, uh, as you know, it was just a couple of days ago that uh, Devin Nunes got the information to all of the redacted FBI uh, interviews and stuff like that so they can finally figure out whether or not there's a political bias at the FBI because that troubles all Americans. Well, think about it. You have a, a former sailor in federal prison because he took a picture of a submarine inside. You're not supposed to do that. I mean, it's wrong. Right. But Hillary had this server set up 
Well, there was all kinds of classified information transferring on that uh, all the time. Huma had it, access. Anthony Weiner ended up with this stuff on his computer, yet nobody was held accountable. And now we know with the Peter Strupp text messages, this is a guy that hated Donald Trump. He wanted Hillary to be president. He's responsible for changing gross negligence in Comey's statement, which is criminal, to extreme carelessness. He was also involved in downgrading the FBI's assessment that her server was very likely hacked right. by foreign agents to which where James Comey said. Exactly. So everything that was done that was questionable dovetailed with them trying basically to bend over backwards not to make the case against her. And it's a big contrast sure. to how they're doing the Mueller investigation, mm -hmm. where they're trying to scorch the earth and do whatever they can find to stick. And I think Americans look at that and they say, should, should we have equal application of the law? Or should some people get the easy way and others really get the screws mm -hmm. to them? Hey, uh, b before you go, I've got one question for you, uh, Ron, regarding a segment we did two segments ago, and that is how the federal government and the president now opening up lands off, or rather, uh, offshore drilling leases so that people would be able to drill off the East Coast, including Florida, off California. Uh, Rick Scott, who's the current governor there, doesn't like the idea. What do you think about it? Well, I agree with Governor Scott. You know, in Florida, our coastline is so important to our economy. It's important to property values. It's important to tourism. And uh, we need to protect our coastline. I am for energy exploration. I was for ANWR. I'm, and if there's other states that have different calculations and they want to do offshore, that's fine. But I'm going to be fighting with Governor Scott to protect Florida's coastlines. And you know what? I think this is just a draft proposal. Um, and I think that the White House will ultimately be with us. And I think we will be able to work it out. Uh, so that Florida's beaches are protected. Okay. So, so, Steve, we want to make sure you're coming down uh, yeah, and still so enjoy your time in Florida. But he also Absolutely. wants, he also talks about energy independence, right? So. Yeah. Well, I think we can do that. I mean, if you look, look at the Permian Basin, Gas is look at the Bakken, right look at the Anwar, look at some other states that may want to do offshore. They may not be as sensitive as Florida is, but I think we've had a long history of, of wanting to have protections for our coastline, and, and guys like me are going to fight to, mm -hmm. to continue that, and I think we'll get that done. All right. Well, Congressman, thank you first for serving our country. Thanks also for serving in Washington. Could become the next governor of Florida. He announced this morning he's going to be running because Rick Scott has served two consecutive term so he has to step down we wish you all the best thanks guys thank you good luck all right jillian has some headlines for us this morning hey jillian that's right good friday morning let's get you caught up on some of your news of the day starting with this fcc chairman ajit pai forced to cancel an upcoming appearance at the annual consumer electronics show in las vegas because of death threats sources tell reuters multiple security agencies are investigating the threats which come after the fcc voted to scrap obama era net neutrality rules the hostility isn't new to Pai, who joined us in late November when protesters were leaving nasty signs at his house. It certainly crosses a line with me. I understand that people are passionate about policy, but the one thing in America that should remain sacred is that families, uh, wives and kids uh, should remain out of it. The exact nature of the most recent threats remains unclear. As North Korea hurls threats against Americans, U.S. officials are now preparing for nuclear war. The Centers for Disease Control holding a briefing later this month to make sure Americans know what to do if we're attacked. That includes sheltering in place for at least 24 hours and paying attention to directions from state and local governments. This week, dictator Kim Jong-un warned he had a nuclear button on his desk. President Trump, though, says his button is bigger. Terrifying moments for a young skier caught upside down on a chairlift some 20 feet above the ground. The girl stuck for several minutes at California's Monmouth Mountain before rescuers were able to catch her. Wow, the skier's mother says the chair's safety bar was down as the family tried to get on the lift. Somehow the teen's leg got caught. She was not hurt. To look at your headlines. It wasn't? No. Wow, that's what amazing. I always worry about with the dismount from the scary. chair. Scary. Indeed. All right, Jillian, thank you. so scary. All right, turning now to extreme weather. The East Coast now digging out from that bomb cyclone and bracing for another deep freeze. Yeah, I just can't believe the names you people in the weather, the weather business come up with. But even a blizzard couldn't stop the New England Patriots, the defending Super Bowl champions, running through the snow and wind to get the practice on time. Their wow. idea of getting around much more effective than, uh, yeah. than this. There they go.
I hear a No, no, let's wait. Let's wait. I, I heard a little <laughs> rumble there. Wait. Yep, no, it's not. It's so. the Mercedes convertible with its top down getting stuck in the snow in Rhode Island. The driver claims he was on his way to get the roof fixed. Oh, no. All right, so the snow has stopped. What happens today? Let's turn to Janice Dean. Who, Janice, you got the storm right yesterday. Well, you know, it was a it was a, a group effort. We yeah. all uh, got the storm right, I think. Uh, certainly a lot of snow for a lot of folks. Long Island, over a foot of snow. Parts of Massachusetts and Rhode Island, over a foot of snow. The system is out of here, which is great news, but we still have strong wind gusts as that low pressure moves into Canada. And that means uh, it's going to feel colder than it really is with wind chills. Oh, in the minus uh, four degree range oh. in New York City and D.C. Yeah, it's cold outside. Minus 19 in Detroit minus 16 in Chicago. It's going to get even colder, unfortunately, as we head into Saturday and Sunday. Wind chill advisories uh, for millions of folks here. And as I mentioned, uh, as far south as South Florida, Steve, okay. freeze advisories in effect. And at some point during the show, I want to address the fact that uh, Brian Kilmeade has brought him, bought himself a full body suit to right. combat the cold. Right. Really? I, that is, what? That is, <laughs> now I have no time to explain myself. I said you instead of long suit. johns, I want Under Armour has a full body suit. Okay. I, and, it, and this was going like to be like spanks, right? They're like, they're like what is spanks? full body spanks. I don't know what they are. It's supposed to keep me warm and, and keep me flexible, <laughs> right? And so I, 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 we need more time. Janice, I know who inspired it's essentially him. a unitard. That dad, a unitard. That right. dad oh, who danced with his little Trek. girls. Sure. The dad who danced all with his little girls. Ladies. Yeah. Exactly. Brian wants to dance to all the single ladies. <laughs> Although you it. can't see my thighs, unlike that girl. <laughs> okay. Right. Take a picture, please. J right. Janice, thanks for opening never. that can. Yes. Away. Really appreciate it. You're never coming on radio again. <laughs> All right, Jeff. She's on TV right now. Oh. <laughs> Jeff Sessions blocking the path for states to legalize marijuana, and some Republicans are not happy. I will be putting today a hold on every single nomination from the Department.